Every Sunday, the University of Cambridge's native scientist, Dr Chris Smith, takes to the airwaves. Here's a look at how his team prepares. But don't miss your opportunity to take part in exciting experiments with him at this year's Cambridge Science Festival. Stripping down science. The Naked Science. Hello, welcome to this week's Naked Scientist. So the deadline for producing the programme is 6 o'clock on a Sunday evening, and that's when the programme actually goes out. It's completely live, but it also contains some edited and some pre-recorded material, as well as live elements like phone-ins and people ringing in for the competition. So there's an enormous amount to cram in, and it's very much a case of radio by the CT pants. In under a minute. OK, so it's parasites this week. Uh, yeah, that's right. So, um... I just want to check through some of the order stuff. So at the start of the week, we have a production meeting involving our team producer, Anna Lacey, and also Dave Ansell, who's the brains behind Kitchen Science. And usually there are some other bits of recording work that we need to do. OK, so Colin, Colin Humphreys, I've got to go and talk to in a minute. So yeah. what have I got to get out of him? We know it's got to be about five minutes, but what, what's it got to... OK, his, his part of the story is... Um, basically making it into LEDs that give off high energy UV which kills everything it's like being on the surface of Mars and then once and then you put these in the pipes that the water is yeah. going through that's everything water's clean and, and the benefit of it being an LED is that they consume less power and they yeah low, uh, you have a low uh, you don't need a very big battery but then you can use solar panels or whatever to charge up that battery right. OK, so now we're going to go to material science on the new museum site to go and have a chat to a guy called Colin Humphreys who's working out a way to make clean water using LEDs. And when it comes to making UV, can you make UV producing LEDs here now? We're just starting to make UV producing LEDs. And what we're finding is, although we can get the right wavelength we want to purify water, what we find is the intensity isn't nearly high enough. So although visible LEDs are very, very bright, UV LEDs are very dim, and there's a lot of science we have to solve to solve that problem. Here we have... So if Colin and his team can crack the problem, we may have in time a very cheap and efficient way of cleaning up water for people in developing countries. Are they difficult to make? They require expensive equipment. It costs about a million pounds. The reason is you have to make these layer by layer. You actually grow them atomic layer by atomic layer. You build them up like this. You're growing them at the same sort of rate as grass grows. It was quite a complicated subject, wasn't it? But on the whole, I thought he did a wonderful job of making it really quite interesting and very engaging. Well, now we're going to go and have a chat to Mark Booth, who is a parasitologist, someone who's an expert on parasites and things you can pick up. They're a major disease burden in, the, in third world countries. We've just heard from Colin about how you can clean up water using his LED technology. Well, Mark's going to tell us some of the things that you might catch from water if you don't clean it up first. Don't put your fingers in there, whatever you do, because they are highly infected. But if you just peer through the lid, you can actually see the snails clinging off the sides of the containers. So if I was to put my finger in one of your tanks, or if, if this was in, in Africa, in, in a lake or something, can you talk me through what would happen to me as a consequence of coming into contact with those snails and what they're harbouring? Yes, well initially you would feel nothing because the saccharial larvae that will penetrate your skin uh, are very small. But if enough of them penetrate, you start to feel a bit itchy, and you may get the dermatitis on your skin. And then maybe two weeks later, you might go down with a fever, because what's happened is the uh, saccharia have developed into sexually mature worms, and those have mated and started producing eggs. And when they produce eggs, that's when they start to become feverish. So the larvae come out of the snail, burrow through my skin, get into me, and where do they go in my body? Well, they get passively circulated through the blood system. So essentially, when they penetrate the skin, they locate the blood vessel, and then they're circulated by the heart into the lungs. And they actually end up in the mesenteric veins, which are the veins that link the liver to the gut. Stripping down science. The Naked Science. Hello, welcome to this week's Naked Scientist. I'm Chris Smith, and also here this week we have Kat Arney. Hi, Kat. Hello. Now this week, it's a fun right. Well, with my stories edited and the guests so in their seats, it's now it's just a case of putting the whole thing together and putting in the live phone calls. Now we've been talking this evening about the possibility of parasites and parasite infections, and I'm very pleased to welcome to the show this week Mark Booth, who's a researcher at Cambridge University. Hi, Mark. Hello. Now you're a parasitologist. 
One of the you focuses on Mark's work is this thing, Schistos Mites. It's also called Bill Hartsia. How many people would you think worldwide are, are troubled with this? There's an estimate that about 200 million people are infected, but maybe 600 million people live in an area where they're at risk of infection. So it, it is a pretty major problem. It is indeed. Um, now, it's a highly infectious pathogen. We couldn't possibly bring it into the studio. It's a major problem in Africa. But uh, part of its life cycle is spent in freshwater snails before it gets into humans. So what, uh, what we asked Mark to do was to go around with me at his lab at Cambridge University on Friday and show us some of the snails that carry it. And this is, this is what we found out. This is Mark's research lab. And we're outside the snail room. the clock guys we've got to finish and, uh, spot uh, on finish. you've got to finish by 59.30 at the latest okay Thanks, now that's it for the Naked Sciences this week a massive thank you to Dr Cat, Alex McKee, Mark Booth, Colin Humphreys, Holly Barclay and Sabina Miknovich who helped us this week next time we'll be finding out about archaeology we'll see you at six next week uh, no, I thought it went very well actually. Thank you to our, our guys who did a wonderful job, Alex and Mark. Uh, calm as anything, it's brilliant. You can normally tell how successful it's been by the number of bits of paper on this desk. And as you can see, there's a snowstorm in here, so uh, it's been a huge response. So we, we won't find out until we talk to the guys out there who've been marshalling 5,000 phone calls a second. So we'll ask them what happens and we'll get some feedback. Then I'm going to go home and have a large beer. Yeah, and then tomorrow morning we'll start planning next week's show.